Okay, so I'm going to throw in these uh, grass tuft strips that I'm going to make. Remember how I did the soil app there earlier? And uh, so I'll show you how I'm going to make uh, grass tufts. So you don't have to pay for them. You can make as much as you want. So this is the same parchment, right, like wax paper. Why on the wax paper? Well, you'll see because when it's done, it, like the, the, this will just peel right off and it'll have a nice membrane on it with all the tufts. Kind of, you can cut it with scissors and stuff, okay? So I'm going to use matte medium here because uh, I want some of the dirt, like if the dirt does show through, um, I want it to be matte, like a matte color. Like I don't want it to be, uh, like have a sheen. Like the carpenter's glue can tend to uh, have a sheen to it. Okay, and then if you lay this on, it's milky now, but um, it'll dry clear. Okay. And it'll be flexible. You want to make sure it's wet around the nail so that that... Um, electrical field is uh, spread out across the whole surface. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right. So let's uh, hook up this little alligator clip from our static grass applicator. Just as a little reminder, this is Woodland Scenics one with a 9 volt battery in it. Turn it on. And just about an inch or so above the surface so when this dries nice for a day or two we're going to have this nice mat that we can lift off of this parchment paper okay so I just wanted to show you that grass patch that I made on the parchment paper here on the dirt, remember? Anyway, it's turned out really good, right? See? It's just so now I can just cut it, you know, uh, strips like this will just peel right off, and then there'll be the emulsified uh, matte medium rubbery pad underneath. So with dirt, see? And then I can just cut patches and strips to lay in. So if you're doing a larger layout, this is really the way to go. Like, I mean, the other method I showed you was just for, for the person that would impulse on strip and at the hobby shop and then on a small project. But if you want to do the prep work in the time, like I showed you and uh, demonstrated earlier, like you can make as much as you want for way cheaper. Like this costs nothing. This was free dirt and then a, a little clump of uh, static grass with the applicator and some matte medium on some parchment paper. Look at it all. How's everybody doing? Okay, so just to touch on the grass tough thing, maybe close up on that. Um, and then I just want to mention about some of the trees here. I built five more. Ugh, that's a hard... <laughs> trees are mad. Trees are no... Um, I mean, trees can be easy. You know, it depends on your perspective, you know, like if you're... And scale and, you know, all the factors, right? But, you know, like in the diorama sense, up close and under scrutiny... You know, you want your trees, the few that you do make, to, you know, to be, uh, you know, a fair, fairly good representation of the prototype, I would imagine. Um, so that's on the list here, right? So I can finally go like this. Like, here's my list of things to do on the layout, details to do, things to consider. Trees are all right. And then blackberry bush at the base of the fence. And then I got all these other things. And then things to consider that uh, a lot of the followers have mentioned that are here too. Um, like road patches and vehicles and figurines and fencing and stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, before I just show, give you a brief kind of overview of what I'm going to do with this. Uh, let me just talk about these two trees for a second. Like you know how it is when you build. Like I mean it's even the case you know, with me is that you, know, you build trees and they always come out different, right? Like this one I did um, from another batch and I built it on, you know, I wrapped the wire, you know, like you'll see in my previous tutorials, 
know, this wire uh, to make the limbs, which I really love. Like they seem more labor intensive, but man, are they great? Because look, you know, like this one I could reflock or reshape or, you know, whatever. Like, you know, they're solid models, eh? Like that's the beauty of them. And you can re, you know, position the limbs, you know. Anyway, this one, you know, I mean, it looks all right, but I find the trunk to be a bit heavy though. But I guess it could be a, you know, a more older growth tree in HO. It can even be a stand-in for O as well. And then I did this batch of five, you know, right here. And I kind of like them because instead of building them on this dowel here, I built them on this thin wire, you know, this this uh, stem, you know, uh, artificial stem from Michael's, you know, the plant section, you know. And I really like it because it's got this thread wrap on it. It's easy to hold in your hand and it's easy to wrap too. But I like the narrow trunk, you know, like compared to the heavier trunk. Like, I don't know what it is. It just, well, it just creates a different look. Like now this one's looking kind of cool. I might turn it into a, uh, like I've been sort of pushing this thing around a bit. But I think I'm going to turn this into like a cedar snag. You know how they, they all the leaves are missing on the top here? You know, like they all fall away and it's dead on top, but then it's, alive down below so I think I'm going to turn this into a snag and have it you know maybe kind of leaning out you know how they lean out like you know if you're I don't know if you're out and about you know how they look right so you know that could be salvaged and used like a older like snag type tree okay and then uh, so here's the uh, grass patch right that I was talking about earlier and you know how you know I had picked up some prefab made stuff you know from uh the hobby shop you know when you're out and about you impulse and things i do too right you yeah. know and then so this was glued onto the the soil and you know you can see watch look see see how it, like it'll just peel right off right but before i do it i want to trim it see that it's got this pad someone mentioned about you know can't you just spray glue you know, like, why do you use so much glue? Well, this is why I use so much glue, and I put the dirt down first. Because it creates a pad, you know. And it's not a necessarily, it's, it's, it's semi-transparent, because I did it with matte medium. But there's also earth in there, you know. So when it does go down on a darker, like, surface, um, the transparency kind of disappears because it's flat. It's not glossy. I mean, it looks glossy when the light hits it, when it's open like that, kind of. But when it goes down, it actually flattens out. That's the beauty of that, um, you know, the Liquitex, you know, matte medium. Somebody else mentioned that other stuff, hodgepodge and all this other stuff. It's probably all the same stuff at the end of the day. Except, you know, the hobby shops re-bottle it and charge more money, you know, or vice versa. But anyway, so... So that's what I'm going to do. And if you want to airbrush this, you can. But if you don't have an airbrush, you don't have to, right? Like, I'll just give you a quick demo here. Like, here's some Tamiya Earth. So I'm just going to dip the, the tip of a wide brush. And this is super thin, right? And then I'm just going to, you know, rub it over top. 
basically just paint the static grass, you know, like whatever color you want. Like you can break it down and then when it comes off in strips, you get all this varied, um, you know, see, I don't know if you can see that, it's changed a bit, you know. Anyway, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so you don't have to have an airbrush to do most of the work that I do. You know, you can, there's other means of achieving the similar result. Although you can't get the same soft edging kind of effects with, uh, without an airbrush, right? It, airbrush is, has that advantage. So yeah, so with this stuff here, like, uh, basically, um, I can just cut, like this is going to go around the, uh, the building edges. I'm just going to, first I'm just going to cut the outside edge of this because it's sort of random, you know. Probably shouldn't be using these scissors. Jeez, my wife's going to kill me if she sees this. I'll have to go get her a set. Um, so I'm just going to cut the outside of this first. There. And now I have basically this nice strip that I'm going to work in around the uh, cold storage building there, you know. And remember how I mentioned the difference between wax paper and uh, the parchment? I like the parchment because it has more grip, you know. And, uh, you know, that extra grip helps to hold it in place, you know, while you're sort of manhandling it and stuff. But you can see the film there, I think. A little bit. See? But then that disappears, though, when you glue it down. And it gives a pad, too, to glue down with. See? Okay. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, there's another little cost saver for you. And, uh, ma you know, make lots, right? And you'll have tons of scenery, like the bush, the blackberry bush thing, the ground grass patches, you know. Um, and then, of course, trees. But, you know, trees seem labor-intensive, but, man, are they ever, ever worth it. Man, are they worth it, you know. So I did five, and I'm glad I got them all done now. So all my trees are done for, for the Glover Road Diorama now. Okay, so thanks for tuning in and I hope that you have a great day.